Hey, what's up, guys? Back to Kato. I'll show you, as always. After Hanako silently takes off her shoes and lies on the bed in the infirmary, the nurse and I take our leave. He shuts the curtain behind us. We both take a seat, and I quietly and thoroughly go through everything that happened in quite some detail. I want to understand what happened, and the nurse has as good a chance as anyone of knowing. He nods throughout my explanation, his face looking troubled as I finish. It must have been very troubling for you to have seen all this. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. I get that she fainted, but I don't really understand about why it happened or why she's acting like this. He nods, but his face is clouded. You don't know either? Well, yes and no. It's complicated. I assume you've heard about the concept of patient confidentiality at some point? This is a bit of a minefield in that respect. I'm going to put this pretty bluntly. This is a matter for Ikazawa, me, and her therapist. I move to protest, but think better of it. I want to deny what he says, but if I think this through rationally, what he says makes perfect sense. I understand. Good, good. I wish I could help you more, but I think what Ikazawa needs right now isn't somebody prying into her past or her emotions. She just needs somebody to be there for her. She needs a friend. For what it's worth, I think you've done well in bringing her here. Sounds like you and your friends dealt with the situation well, too. I'd give you a lollipop or a sticker as a reward, but you might be a little too old for either. He gives a cocky grin, obviously trying his best to lighten the atmosphere. I'm not really in the laughing mood, but he does manage to get a smile out of me. Thanks, um... Do you mind if I stay here with Anako? I appreciate the thought, but I think it would be better to let her rest for now. She'll be led back to her dormitory room this evening, so you could revisit her then. I agree with him before standing. It feels like all I can ever do around the nurse is humbly agree to what he says. But it was, it was with the same doctors in the hospital, too. It was the same. The walk back to the classroom is a long one, my mind feeling heavy under the weight of so many things happening so suddenly. Even as I re-enter the classroom, I'm thinking about Hanako. My stomach feels like it's turning into knots while I think about how to deal with her. I still don't know what I'm going to say when I see her again. Thankfully, the class doesn't pay me much heed. There are a couple of questioning glances, but overall not many people seem to be very aware of what happened. Muto raises his eyebrows to get my attention when I pass by his desk. Nakai, I take it Ikazawa is in the infirmary now? Yeah, I took her there. And the nurses said I should let her rest. Muto nods, assuring me that I made the right call. He scratches his chin for a second before rising from his desk. Everyone, I want you to continue with the exercises. Nakai, I'll see you in the hallway, please. His speech is hushed, but overall he doesn't seem to be acting too differently from how he usually does. Being a teacher, maybe it's to be unexpected. As we go into the hallway, I notice him taking a quick glance left and right to check if it, to check if there are any students smiling around. The hallway is nearly soundless, but I can't think of anything except waiting for Muto to speak. Nakai, what do you think the purpose of this school is? Um, to cater to the needs of the disabled students? Muto scratches his head as he shakes it. No, if we wanted to do that, we would have built a whole new school from scratch. One floor, talking whiteboards, that kind of thing. Look around, Nakai. The school is about giving you all the future that you would have been denied in regular education. Huh? Think of it this way. If we wanted you to graduate and go straight into a hospital, do you think we'd put this much effort? The bluntness of Muto's statement temporarily stuns me, causing me to forget about the immediate situation. No. That's right. We want you to all leave here as useful members of society. I'm not quite sure I'm following you. I have high hopes for you, Nakai. You are possibly the first student I've had that gets my lectures. That isn't something that a teacher should be admitting so freely. You could easily take your studies of science well into university. Have you ever considered that? I can't say I have. Well, what have you considered? For your future, that is.
I can't say that I've put much thought into my future. For a moment, I'm distinctly reminded of Lily questioning me about the same subject. It's only been a little over five months since I was gasping for air on the ground. It's too soon to be thinking about the future. And besides, Hanako's problems seem much bigger to me right now. Muto gives a disappointing sigh before continuing. Think of this place as an opportunity. Here you have boundless facilities, good teachers, plus the added bonus of the nurse and the staff. You should be doing nothing but thinking of the future. Er, right. As I raise my head to meet his gaze, a thought occurs to me. It's almost like Muto totally sidestepped the issue at hand. Excuse me, but why do none of the staff seem to care when Hanako skips class? I've seen you watch her walk out of the class more than once. Shouldn't you at least say something? Well, Nakai, it's not really that simple. Every student here has needs. If it weren't for that, then we wouldn't have a school here. For example, I wouldn't keep you in class if you were having trouble breathing, would I? But that's not... Muto cuts me off before I can even think about finishing my sentence. Ikazawa's case is very much like that, but instead of CPR or a pacemaker, what she needs is time and space. The faculty was made aware of this from the day she arrived here. Thus, whenever she feels the need to leave classes, we let her do so. And even though she isn't a star pupil, she seems to pass all of her exams, so it hasn't affected her ability to study. Isn't that enough? I open my mouth to protest, but I can't find any fault in his argument. While her condition does at first seem to be wholly psychological, its worst effects have been her psyche. Physiological, whatever. Words. It still puts me off, though. Isn't she just... Isn't he just passing on the responsibility for her problem? Surely she can't go on like this for her entire life. I understand that you might not be used to this kind of thing yet. It's been a big change for you. That said, it's less than a year until graduation now. Maybe you won't have to get used to this school. If you keep your head down, I'm sure you'll get... I'm sure you'll do well enough in your exams. I numbly nod. More to simply acknowledge that I'm listening than out of an argument. Than out, bleh, than out of agreement. I felt like I was getting used to this school, but it feels like it's just been thrown back in my face. But what about Hanako? I believe... Well, I hope that she will... She will perform well enough to do what she wants to do. What that is, I don't know. Not all the students leave school with an idea of what they want to do, unfortunately. He takes care to emphasize the last word, as if it wasn't clear enough already, and gives me a moment to mull his words over. Today's been a troublesome day for you, and I doubt you'd be able to concentrate much anyway after all that's happened, so I'll allow you to take the rest of the day off. Your marks have been good enough in class so far, which makes me think you won't have any trouble catching up on what we're doing. He gives a small smile along with his praise, as if to make up for the seriousness of his lecturing before now. Go collect your things, and I'll see you tomorrow. Right, thank you. Muto's roundabout speech has left my thoughts scattered. I'm still not any closer to working out what I can do to help Hanako, if anything, and my mind is all the more confused after what Muto said. I'm also still bothered by the fact that Hanako was helped at least as much by Shizune, her enemy by proxy, as by myself, but I don't know whether that is just male bravado or a genuine concern. While I collect Hanako's things and my things from the class, I continue to try and sort out my feelings. I want to say that I understand her, and that I'm there for her, but while I might have been able to say that just yesterday, I can't say it now. I wish I could. I lay on my bed, trying to collect my thoughts. Yeah. After Hanako's panic attack, I found myself fundamentally reassessing the relationship we share, and what I know about her. I had a hard enough time dealing with four months in the hospital. One look at her scars tell me that she was in for a lot longer than I was. Be that as it may, I know next to nothing about her past. She's told me about the house fire, but only in the most basic way. And what of her family? I still haven't asked Loli about them. There hasn't been a good opportunity to bring it up. I don't know where she grew up, or what her old school was like, nor of her past friends, her wishes, and ambitions, not even her taste in music, food, and movies, all the little things that I knew about all my old friends. 
Just what have I been doing for all this time I've been with her and Lily? In the distance, I hear the bell signaling the end of classes. With any luck, Lily will soon realize that neither Hanako nor I are around and return to her to dormitories. My mobile phone starts to ring, cutting my thinking short. It quite startles me, as I've rarely been called since coming to Yamaku. Hello, Hisao Nakai speaking. Oh, Hisao, I'm glad I found you. You weren't at any of our usual places, so I thought this would be the fastest way to contact you. I probably should have guessed it would be Lily, as she's one of the few people I've given my number to, even though the phone, her voice sounds slightly on edge, through the phone. I, Hanako, and I left class early. She had some kind of panic attack. The line goes silent. If it weren't for the background static, I would have thought Lily had hung up on me. I understand. Could you come to my room? I'd like to talk to you. Sure, I'd appreciate the chance to have a bit well, sure I'd I'd appreciate the chance to have a bit of a talk actually good good I also have some bad news I think we should discuss this in person it's hard to grasp the seriousness of the situation from Lily's tone she sounds so calm most of the time but that could be a good or a bad thing depending on how you look at it okay I'll be right there I collect Hanako's things. I cannot. <sighs> Doing so bad. I collect Hanako's school things from my desk and head straight for Lily's room. I wrap my knuckles on her door and she soon calls me in. Lily sits at the table inside her room, looking a little worse for wear. I guess that's because of the bad news. Following her gesture of, invita of invitation, I sit across from her and lay Hanako's things on the table. Well, there's no point in either of us waiting. Would you mind going first, Tassau? What happened today? My memory of the incident is already beginning to fade, but I explain it as best I can to Lily. Inviting Hanako to work with the group, Shizune and Misha's questioning, our foray to town getting discovered, and the subsequent panic attack. I add Shizune's reaction almost as an afterthought, but Lily seems to take some kind of comfort in hearing about it. I guess rivals don't become rivals for no reason. There must be some history there, but now isn't the time to explore it. I see. She had said her therapist sessions were helping, but I had my doubts. It's quite a shame. Her birthday has caused problems before, but I had hoped that she would have improved with you around, and the more intense therapy. Where is Hanako now? Last time I saw her, she was in the infirmary. I guess she's gone back to her room by now. She wasn't in the library or the tea room when I checked, so I can only assume that too. You said you would also had some bad news. What's the matter? Do they concern Hanako? Lily shifts her position, the body's way of saying she's searching for the right words. My aunt has fallen gravely ill. I'm afraid I'm going to be heading back to Scotland to visit her and to spend some time with my family. What? Is she alright? When did you leave? When do you leave? I'm not altogether sure of exactly how she's faring at the moment. Though last I heard she was stable. I'll be leaving Saturday. It's the earliest flight that I could get. Stable. That's code for needs to stay in the hospital. I've been stable long enough to know that. And to know that it doesn't necessarily mean someone is in good condition, but barely treading water. On the upside, stable is much better than critical condition. At least she's not on the brink of death. Stable. That's a relief. Yes, but this means that I won't be here for Hanako's birthday. I wanted to tell you so now we could think of so we could think of something before we told Hanako. But after today's events, I'm not even sure if there's going to be an issue if we simply cancel the party. I don't think that is such a good idea. Hanako already knows that we were planning a party. To go back on that now seems like the wrong thing to do. Also, we should do something for your going away, right? You make it sound as if I won't be coming back. If, I, if all goes well, I should only be away for a week, though possibly two. That's one relief, at least. 
With that in mind, what do you suggest then? Given the circumstances, I don't think karaoke is really appropriate. You're not going away for the greatest of reasons, so having too much fun would feel wrong. What did you do for her birthday last year? Last year, I literally couldn't get her out of her room. She'd locked the door. All I could do was leave food outside for her, making sure that she was at least eating well. This is perhaps the most depressed I've ever seen and heard Lily act. I feel sorry for her, given how defeated she must feel to be unable to help her closest friend. Perhaps it would be better to throw her the party before you leave, then. That does sound like it would be the easiest option. I think we should at least tell Hanako, both about your trip and the party. I have her things from class as well. That's a good point. Should we go and visit her now? I... I think that would be a good idea. Part of me is dying to see Hanako. The last time I saw her, she looked like death walking, and these last few hours have torn me apart just thinking about that. We quietly get up and file out of Lily's room. Hanako's room is next door in the same hallway. Knocking lightly gets us no response, but the door proves to be unlocked. Lily pauses for a moment as she handles... as the handle unexpectedly moves under... Blah. As the handle unexpectedly moves under her hand, before opening the door. Hanako's room is startlingly bare and monotone. There are no decorations on the plain white walls, a plain dark blue blanket, and only a few books, papers, and purely utilitar utilitarian, bleh, utilitarian items on the shelves. Even her bedsheets are monochrome. The entire room feels as subdued as Hanako's character. Look at those glorious legs. Wait, no, no, it's not the time. I'll look at her legs later. Hanako herself is laying curled up on her bed. She might not be crying now, but her eyes are closed tightly to stop herself. And the tracks left by her tears still sit on her red cheeks. Note, it may not seem like it, but seeing Hanako cry and this scene tugs at my heartstrings. Very much pain. I quietly walk in and set her bag down on the desk, afraid of startling her too much. Hello, Hanako. Hisao told me about what happened today. Are you alright? Hanako's eyes open, though only a little. Uh, I'm okay. She tilts her head slightly to look at me, noticing my grimacing before I can hide it. S sorry for making you worry. Really, I'm... Fine now. She really doesn't look nor sound okay, though at least she seems more calm than she was before. She still looks as if the slightest breath could emotionally break her. I said it before, right? You don't need to be sorry about this. It sounds right. We... I... shouldn't have hidden something like a birthday celebration from you. I see Hanako shiver at the word. Lily picks up on the silence that follows and crouches down to Hanako's level. I'm the only one who should be sorry, Hanako. Hanako's eyes open to peer at Lily. She looks at Lily for some time, taking in her face with those dark, analytical eyes of hers. Lily must have made the right impression on her, as Hanako recovers enough to prop herself up on the bed and shift to the sitting. To sitting on its side, Hanako worries about many things, but troubling others is foremost among them. Hearing Hanako's shuffling, Lily moves forward and feels out the side of the bed, eventually taking a seat beside her and taking Hanako's left hand in both of hers. The feeling of me being out of place when the two of them are together has lessened in the time that we've known each other, but it's still occasionally very much there. This is one of those times, I think. Lily, if you want me to go... I don't want that. Lily and I are both surprised at Hanako mustering her courage, a half-mumbled okay is all I can give her in reply, and I take her desk chair to sit in. Hanako, I'm afraid I have some bad news. So Lily's going to break the news now, with Hanako having affirmed our relationship so clearly, perhaps Lily thought the timing was good, or at least as good as it will ever be. My aunt has fallen gravely ill, so I need to return to my family for some time. 
concern replaces Hanako's remorseful expression. Your family. You mean in Scotland, right? That's right. Akira and I will be leaving Saturday. So, so you're going away? I won't be gone for long. Probably only a week or two. I'll be back before you know it. And Asao will be here, right? That's right, I'm not going anywhere. Hanako seems to take only minor comfort in this, but she does manage to summon some resolve from somewhere inside her. Is your aunt going to be alright? I'm not sure. Silence falls. It's depressing that the only thing that truly brings Hanako out of her rut is another's misfortune. I decide to bring up the other matter that brought us here, to distract at least in part from the dismal feeling permeating the room. Anyway, we were thinking that it would be a good idea to have a going away party for Lily, and it could double as... yeah. I cut myself off before mentioning her birthday, as that seems to be a trigger for such fierce emotions within her. Lily gives Hanako's hand a gentle squeeze. Is it alright by you, Hanako? It won't be anything lavish or overdone, just something small in my room. So, so just in the school? Just us? That's right. Just the three of us, if you like. I could also ask Akira to come as well. Okay. You, you're only going for a week? One week or two, yes. I promise you it won't be any longer. Oh, okay. Most people would be upset at hearing about a friend's family member falling ill and happy at having a birthday party. Happy about having a party, but with Hanako, it seems that both events are on the are on the same level. God damn! All right then, you look like you need a rest, Hanako. So it might be best if we all went back to our rooms for now. You know that if you ever want anything, you can always talk to me or Hasao, right? Lily's voice is pensive, an unusual edge for someone as confident as herself as she. I understand. Thank you, Lily. So Well then, good night, Hanako. Night. I let out a long breath after the door closes behind us. It feels a little like I've been deep underwater and only now have been able to come up for air. Lily doesn't seem to be doing well either. She looks pale and drawn. Are you alright? I'm just a little tired. It's been hectic recently. Have you slept at all? A little tired sounds like an understatement, giving how you look. I think I managed to get a couple hours of sleep before class. I'll be okay. I feel bad about pressing Lily right now. I think both of us are pretty tired from everything that's happened as well. I think you should get some rest. It's been a big day, and staying up isn't good for your complexion. Thank you for your concern, Hassel. Good night, then. Okay, night, Lily. I leave Lily in the hallway as she opens the door to her room and begin to make my way to my own. As I walk down the quiet hallway, I can't get that image of Hanako out of my mind. Huddled and pitiable, lying helpless with tears on her cheeks, I begin to think that she was just normal, if extremely shy person, but her problems run much deeper. Trying to take our relationship further than what we share now, when she's so fragile and vulnerable, wouldn't be right. I don't need to be more than her friend in order to protect her, to try to stop anything like this ever happening again. The possibility of my feelings for her going beyond that, that doesn't matter anymore. Hanako is precious to me, and that's why I can't take advantage of her. But even so, there's still that sting I feel when I think that way. For now, I need to sleep. Tomorrow, hopefully, will be a better day. Okay, gonna end the part there. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later. Peace.